Hello, Qui-Gon, Swamp Rats, and anyone else. I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. I did, as always. Christmas is easily my favorite time of year. If you did anything cool, tell me about it. If not, tell me about it too. I love hearing from you guys. All right, so I want to do a quick video on tas tenacity, potency, their mods, the stats, what they mean, what they do. Um, it's you think it's fairly straightforward. You need pot potency to land a debuff. You need tenacity to resist a debuff. That's not really the case. Um, you would think at zero percent zero percent potency, you would have zero percent chance to land a debuff. That's not true at all. In fact, at zero percent potency, you probably have a pretty good chance to land your debuff. So just to clear it up, so potency is that stat helps land debuffs. Tenacity helps resist debuffs. But which one is better? Are they both? Is either one any good? Let's talk about it. So there's going to be a little bit of math on this. I'm going to try to keep it as straightforward as possible. The equation is pretty straightforward, if not a little bit backwards to me. So if we pull it up here, so our equation to figure out our resist chance is tenacity minus potency equals resist chance. No matter what the stats are, you always have a base of 15% resist chance. So even with tenacity down, there's still a 15% chance to resist. That's why you see the Rancor or um, somebody in the HAAT resist when they have tenacity down. You can't drop below that base of 15%. It would make, I think, more sense to most people to have potency minus tenacity equals debuff chance. But that's not the way it works. It's heavily favored on the attacker versus the defender. So just to give you an example, if you had 0% tenacity and 0% potency, what would your chance to resist be? Well, 0 minus 0 is 0. Your resist chance would be 0. So your base of 15% would kick in. You'd be at 15% resist chance. So you would think 0, 0. Nope, you get a 15% chance. If your tenacity is 50, your potency is 50. 50 minus 50 is 0. So your base of 15% kicks in at 50 and 50 you have a 15 percent resist chance so let's say they have 50 potency what would you need in tenacity to get it above that 15 percent we had 15 on 65 so you would need at least 65.1 percent potency for the number to even matter at that point you would get 15.1 percent resist chance you could just have zero percent tenacity and you'd still get 15 percent resist chance so tenacity is, for the most part, a worthless stat. Most characters don't have that high of a tenacity stat, so it's pretty hard to raise it. Even with a full set of tenacity mods and the 24% tenacity cross, it's hard to get it that high where, potency, where it matters much. Most debuffers have a pretty good potency already, so you're going to lose protection, you're going to lose offense or health or whatever on there, for a slightly better chance to resist. In some cases, it's not even going to be a better chance to resist at all. You might not even get above that base of 15%. So that means potency must be good, right? You want to load them up with potency? Not really, because most debuffers already have a naturally high potency, and most characters have a fairly low tenacity. You don't actually really need to put much potency on them if any, you're probably going to be looking at that around 15% resist chance anyway. You can put as much potency as you want on there. It's not going to matter. So if a character starts off, let's say the average character is 40% potency, 20% tenacity, right there, you're, you're at the 15% chance. They're at a negative 20% resist chance, which puts them to the 15%. You don't need to add any potency on there. But let's look at some of our attackers, and I'll just give you an example. I'm talking about here. So if we look at Commander Luke, all right, so I do have a potency cross on Luke. Now, the reason I do is not for Arena, even though I use him in Arena, it's for the raids. So he can land that big attack, that tenacity down on the Rancor on Grievous that first time. And then, then his potency doesn't matter at all because they have 0% tenacity, again, giving them a base chance of 15%. But let's look at his stats. So his potency is 36.32%. I'm 
I'm giving him 25.32% from mods. Okay, so he's got really lousy potency, naturally, without that, without that mod on there. So he's got 11% potency, right? His tenacity is 36.93% from mods. Okay, so he's got 33% tenacity. So he's one of those characters that tenacity is higher than potency, except for... Which one is it? Boom. Luke has 40% potency. He gives himself 40% potency out of the gates. He's actually got pretty nice potency. So his potency naturally is much higher than his tenacity. So Luke on Luke, he's going to land those debuffs 85% of the time. So you're looking at one of the lowest potency characters, but he gives himself 40% potency. Let's just, let's take another debuffer. Oh, and by the way, he gets another 10% of R2 is there, which if you're using Luke, there's a real good chance R2 is there. Let's look at R2. He does his stuns. He does the burn. His stats. His potency is 47.43%. All right. That's that's more or less his base. He's got 43% base um, if you take off the mods. His tenacity, so he's got, we'll say, 57% base if you take off the mods. 56% base. All right, so he's actually got higher tenacity than he's got potency. So he's a character that's like, well, maybe you could load him with tenacity or blah, blah. No, because here's the deal. It's less than a 15% difference, so he goes to 15% resist chance anyway. He's one of the highest tenacity, base natural tenacity characters in the game. Plus, R2 gives himself a bonus 10% potency, which raises him up to that 53% versus the 57%. It's... You could load them up with tenacity if they put any potency on them. It's going to negate it. But let's just go through some of the characters. So we've got an idea we're in that 40 to 50% range on on potency on the two characters we've looked at. Let's check out the Knobster. What's his tenacity? He's a tank. What can he resist? Tenacity. His base tenacity stat is 36%. They're already sitting at 50%. You, again, you... At 50%, he'd have to raise it to 66%, another 30% tenacity, just to have a 16% chance to resist versus a 15% chance to resist. And that's before any even R2's 10% bonus. It's not worth it to load him up with tenacity. It's For the most part, it's not. Um, you, even if we look at Han, Han does his stun on there. His potency, it's low, 15.8%. So 12% without anything. His tenacity, his base is 35%. So just Han on Han, just base. He's got a 23% chance to resist, a whopping 8% higher than he would normally. And then R2 gives him 10%. So he goes to the 15%. Again, you could load him up with tenacity, Maybe he'd resist some other Hans, but if they put any potency on him, see, it's just tenacity's a more or less worthless stat, and because tenacity is a worthless stat, you don't really need potency. You can see I'm not running potency on him. He still lands his stuns all the time. That's zero is more than enough potency for most characters to land the stuns the majority of the time. Now. I don't have anything special on in there. I have a, a health one. So, I mean, if I had a good speed potency one, it's not like I'm losing a lot to put it on there. I was mainly going for speed and offense on there. A little crit chance is nice too. Um, but you're potentially losing out on protection or some extra offense or whatever. So, are there characters that tenacity matters on? Oh, really? Yes, there, there could be. Thrawn and Luke are two that you could potentially load up with tenacity and it would make a difference. The reason for Luke, so if he, if he has learn control, Zated, so he gets plus 100% tenacity when he's in defense mode. Here's the issue. You know what the AI does? It takes him straight to offense mode. So half the battle, that one doesn't even matter at all. That's not cool. All right, Thrawn. Where is he? Where are you hiding from me, Smurf? All right. Thrawn gets plus 100% tenacity if he's got Evan Flow sated. So, nice one there. 
So those two, you can run them with full tenacity sets, get their tenacity pretty high. They're going to resist most things. Here's the thing. What are you sacrificing to do that? Crit damage, crit chance on Luke, same on Thrawn or offense. You're sacrificing protection if you're moving it on tenacity onto that cross. Is it really worth it? Are people really going after Thrawn once he's fractured? When he gets that counter chance? No, because they don't want him to shoot back at him. They can try for the stun, you know, if they're stealth, but for the most part, people aren't really trying that. He's got decent tenacity anyway. Again, doesn't matter against their potency most of the time, but it just doesn't make sense. So what I would what I would tell people, people always ask about tenacity mods, um, for the most part, worthless. And everyone kind of is under the assumption that, hey, you put a potency cross on somebody that needs a debuff. For the most part, that's kind of worthless too. This all kind of started with Palpatine. He was the first major debuffer. If you look at Palpatine's stats, his potency, I have a potency cross on him for when I used to use him in P3 because I really want to land those shocks on those B2s because that was really annoying when you missed one and I had to start the whole battle over 100,000 times. So, but even without that 24%, he's still clocking 50% plus. And then if he's using his leader, if you remember what his leader does, another 32% potency. You have, there's no reason in PvP, not that anyone's using this guy in Arena, but just as an example, he kind of started all this. There's no reason to put potency on him. Now, are there exceptions to every rule? Yes. So J Dollars doesn't chime up and say, what about Poe? Yeah, there are some debuffers whose potency just kind of sucks. So for the most part, debuffers have pretty good potency. Poe doesn't. Poe's potency, I mean, he's running. But I'm giving him 62.75% there. So he's running, really? Yeah, I haven't updated the deal with it. He's running 15% potency normally. Again, that's going to still land a lot of debuffs, but for a guy whose sole purpose in life is to remove turn meter and land expose, you are going to want potency on him. So there are exceptions to every rule. If it's literally the only thing that, he, that they do, Poe is worthless without that. He doesn't attack. His, nobody cares about his taunt because you're not moving if resistance is going well. So yes, there are exceptions to the rule. Poe is one of them. But I hope that clears up some questions on there. Tenacity is definitely worthless unless you're going to go real high. That's what I've always said. Unless you can go real, real, real high, a tenacity don't bother. And even then, you're probably still losing some things that you don't want to lose. Potency, for the most part, since tenacity is worthless, is fairly worthless. But there are certain exceptions where you would want potency. All right, if you have any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I'm, next time someone brings this up, I'm just going to link the video so I don't have to type it. Sound good? All right. Thanks, guys.